operator, I've been told there's no phone listed under the name of Lawrence Goodrich. If I gave you the address, do you think you could find a number for me? Sorry, I cannot give you that information. Thank you. I'm Mrs. Henley, Women's Welfare League. May I speak to you? Yes. I happen to notice you got off the Coast Limited over an hour ago. Are you waiting for another train? No, I I'm waiting for someone to meet me. Seems like ages. I, I can't imagine what's keeping them. Is there any way I can help? No, I'm afraid not. I guess I'll just have to wait. May I sit with you? Surely. You tried phoning. He's not listed. Is there no friend you could call? No relative? Don't you even know where he lives? Yes, uh, 424 Sylvester Street. <laughs> We've been writing every day. Then why don't you run over there? Oh, no, he wrote that he'd meet me at the station. Uh, I'd be afraid to leave. Suppose he came here and couldn't find me. He'll find me. The problem's all solved. I'll be here for six hours yet, and I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> now, what's his name? What does he look like? Oh, you'd easily recognize him. He's tall and rather good-looking, yes. Naturally. Here, I have his picture. His name's Larry Goodrich, Lawrence Goodrich. He is good-looking. Gloria. I'm sure you'll recognize him. I don't want to be impolite, Gloria, but I couldn't help noticing. Are you sure you have taxi fare? Yes. Sylvester Street. How far is that? It runs right in front of the depot. You said 400 block? 424. Mm -hmm. That's to your left as you leave the depot, but it's at least a mile. Oh, I'm sure I won't have any trouble finding it. He wrote it was a large apartment house. Then you'll be on your way. And if he shows up here, I'll send him after you. Thank you. <laughs> Nonsense. You run along and find your man. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I seem to be mixed up on a street number. I'm looking for 424. It's an apartment house. Well, you're at 424 right now, but I don't know of any apartments around here. Can I serve you something? No, thank you. I'm looking for a Larry Goodrich. It's possible I mixed up where he lives with where he works. He didn't say exactly where his job was. You wouldn't know if he worked here, would you? Well, I don't know any Larry Goodrich. I'm sorry. Thank you. Richards. Oh, just a minute, lady. There was a Larry Richards that worked here till this morning. He got some mail under that name, Goodrich. Someone else picked up Larry's mail? Uh, this Larry, uh, what's he look like? <laughs> I have his picture right here. What do you want with this guy? If you must know, I, I came out here to marry him. Came out from where? Claremore. That's in Kansas. Another one. You mind if I show this to the boss? Uh, show him this, maybe he can tell you something. Thank you. news for you, kid. Can you take it? Something's happened to Larry. Cops nailed him at 11 o'clock this morning. Please. Picked him up at the railroad depot. He had too many wives and a solo ticket to Cleveland. Well, 
like to give the young lady a drink. No. Don't let it throw you, kid. It's a break, really. You didn't marry him and three others did. You're a lot better off than they are. Why don't you buy yourself a train ticket back to Kansas? Forget the whole thing. Oh, I forgot. You're broke. I can only talk to him. You can talk to him. That's easy. All you gotta do is go over to the county jail during visiting hours. But I wouldn't advise it. Cops will only hold you as another material witness. Why get mixed up in it? If you need a little cash for a train ticket, maybe I can help you out. No, I couldn't accept it. No. He give you that ring? If it's yours. The heel probably bought it with your dough. Look, you need a railroad ticket. Why don't you raise it on that? Do you know some place where I could pawn it? Better than that. I know a jeweler who might buy it from you. His name is Winters. He's right down the street in the next block. But you better hurry. He closes at nine. You've been most kind. I do appreciate it. Skip it. How do you like a heel like that? Well, anyhow, they pinched him. Shows the cops are good for something in this town. Uh, Mr. Winters? Yes? I heard you might be interested in buying a ring. Oh, stop by in the morning. I'm closing now. Well, couldn't you possibly consider it tonight? I need money rather badly for train fare home to, to Kansas. I couldn't buy it tonight. It takes time. I, I'd have to check with the police. I don't understand. I don't mean it's stolen. You have to report these things. Or you'd have to give me some local references. Someone well known in the city. An employer would do. I have no employer. You don't know anyone in this city? I just arrived here today meet someone. There's been a mistake and I have to go home at once. I see. Well, if it's an emergency. Oh, it is, I assure you. Let's stay back in my office. Thank you. The thousand be all right? A thousand dollars? Miss Dell, I have a good reputation in the city. You can be confident that I'm not cheating you. Oh, I didn't mean that. It it's just that I didn't realize. He said it cost 300. Probably didn't want you to think he was extravagant. It's a good stone, good setting. You think my offer is fair? Oh, of course. And then you'll fill out the receipt. Custom, right? Here we are. I do thank you. I won't take up any more of your time. Not at all. It's purely business. Will you please shut the door securely on your way out, Miss Dell? Oh, certainly. Good night, sir. Good night. Connect me with the police. Thanks. Hello, 
Gloria. Your man didn't turn up here, so I... You found him all right? Uh, no, uh, something came up. I'm going back home. Oh, sorry. Anything I can do? I'd rather not talk about it. Goodbye. You know that girl? Only that she came in on the train tonight and is leaving again. Her first name's Gloria. I think it was some sort of man trouble. Not man trouble. Armed robbery. All right, Gloria, let's go over it again. When you went to see Sapelli with that hard luck story, you didn't have any money in your wallet. And that welfare woman at the depot, she noticed that you had an empty wallet. That makes two witnesses to swear that you didn't have any money earlier this evening. I haven't denied that. And yet, when you were picked up at the depot, you had over $800 in here, plus a one-way ticket to Florida. I told you I sold my ring to Mr. Winters. Estelle, Charles Winters is a jeweler of some reputation. He says this diamond is a phony. Even I can see it's a phony. Why would an experienced jeweler pay you a thousand for it? I don't know, but he did. You used this ring as a decoy to get Mr. Winters to open the store tonight. That's not true. I'll repeat it if you like. While examining the ring in my office, she took a gun from her handbag. Took me completely by surprise. Where's the gun? You ditched that the same place you ditched the jewelry? I didn't ditch anything. Why'd you buy a train ticket? Why were you lambing out of town? I didn't. You didn't buy this ticket? Yes, I, I did. But I wasn't lambing out of town. I was just leaving town. Can't you understand? I didn't take anything. I didn't hide anything. Do you want me to say that I did? Do you want me to lie? Are you trying to? Lock her up. I'll talk to her first thing in the morning. You can go now, gentlemen. Thank you. Wave cups. I want to see Mr. Cepelli. Hey, I hear you got stuck up last night. Mr. Winners wants to see you. Bring him in, Benny. Too bad, Charlie. Sorry it was me who sent you the blonde. She took everything in the place that was worth anything. Oh, it's tough. But if you're here to tell me you can't pay off, skip it. I've heard of you owe me 23 Gs. I know that. Those 3,000. I can pay the rest back at the rate of 5,000 a week. Yesterday you were broke. Yesterday you couldn't pay off for six months. Last night you got robbed and today you got money. You didn't win that on a horse race, not from one of my bookies you didn't. I thought you said you'd heard about the Germans. Consolidated, started settlement. Okay, Charlie, I'll credit you three G's. Thanks. You want a tip in the seventh race, Mr. Winners? He's a liar, Benny. Insurance companies don't settle that fast. I think I'll make a little confidential phone call and find out. These little confidential phone calls. Suppose the DA tapped your phone. He did, kid. That phone's been tapped for a week. Good morning, Consolidated Insurance Company. I want to talk to the general manager, Mr. Otto Thorndike. Tell him it's Joseph Pelly calling. Yes, Mr. Uh, or Joe. If you please call me at home, I'm busy now. Cool off, Otto. I'm not booking a race. I want some information. That uh, robbery last night, the blonde with a gun. Has your company started payments to Charles Winters yet? Of course not. We don't make a settlement without complete investigation. These things take time. That's what I thought. Benny, call out at your own. Tell him, meet me at City Hall right away. Are we in a jam? No, but that blunt is. Call Artie, Benny. Then you believe I had nothing to do with this? That's why I'm here. Last night at the police station. That was last night. Look, Gloria, I'm going to get you out of this. My lawyer is right downstairs. His name is Artie Jerome. He's the best in town. I have him on a yearly retainer anyway. He hasn't done anything for me in months. It's about time he got off his overstuffed chair. Would you mind if I ask you a question? Naturally, I'm grateful, but why should you go to all this trouble for me? Why? Well, it's no trouble. Time's up, Miss Dale. 
Pack your things, kid. You're getting out of here. Time's up, Miss Dell. Hello, Mr. District Attorney. I hope you don't mind. I brought my lawyer along in case you try to pin something on me. I'd like nothing better. This is Chief Ramsey. I think you've met him. Oh, yeah. He'd like to pin something on me, too. They want to use me for a pin cushion, Artie. So, Pelly, let's get to the point. You want Gloria Dell released. Why? Because you don't have anything to hold her on. Does he, Artie? Mr. Durbin, as I see it, all you have are a few scraps of circumstantial evidence and the rather melodramatic claims of Charles Winters. No witnesses actually saw the holdup. The girl's word is just as good as the jeweler's. Sure. How do you know Winters didn't frame the whole thing himself? For the insurance. You haven't found the jewelry yet. How do you know he didn't try to peddle the stuff to some fence? Maybe he did try to peddle it. To you. Oh. They call me everything, Artie. Now they're calling me a fence. Does Sapelli want to testify to the effect that Charles Winters robbed his own store? Mr. Sapelli doesn't want to testify to anything. He believes in the girl's innocence and he wants to put up bond for her release. He's retained me to defend her any time you care to bring the case to trial. Well, the bond in this case may be $10,000. So it's $10,000. All right. Make your arrangements with the court clerk. Oh, uh, about the... Its legal ownership is still questionable. Give her this when you spring her. Tell her it's a loan. I'll see you again. Uh, you too, Chief. We'll be counting on it. Old trouble with the Sapelli Syndicate? Tight as steel, surrounded by protection. No weak spots for us to hit through. I think we just found a weak spot. Miss Dell, when you were booked last night, you gave false information. You listed your hometown as Miami. It's not Miami, it's Claremore, Kansas. Ordinarily, we'd assume you were trying to hide a previous jail record. But your fingerprints don't disclose anything. There's no previous record, I assure you. And I believe you. You were attempting to conceal your hometown in an effort to spare your family from scandal. Is that right, Gloria? You didn't want anything to offend them or to wreck your sister's marriage to Bob Stewart. How did you know that? We examined your luggage. Found this clipping and a few others from your hometown paper. The Stewarts seem to be an important family back in Claremore. You come from a pretty nice family yourself. Isn't it enough that you arrest me for something I didn't do? Must you drag my family into it? There's no reason for your family ever to learn about it. If you cooperate with us. Doing what? This Joseph Pelly. How well do you know him? I hardly know him at all. He's been kind to me. Why? Gambling happens to be against the law in this state. Your Joe Sapelli runs a bookie syndicate. He makes a lot of money at it, strictly outside the law. Oh, Mr. Sapelli earns his living, doesn't concern me. But it does concern me. My job is to stop Sapelli, to break up his syndicate and send him to prison. And I can use you, Gloria. Sapelli trusts you. A man trusts me, and, and you want me to spy on him. The man's a criminal. Gloria, if you help us, I'll postpone your trial in the Winters case. Make it easier. Keep it out of the papers. What if I refuse? When the case comes to trial, the papers will make a big story of it. It'll be carried by the syndicates, which means it might get as far as Kansas and to your family. I don't seem to have much say in the matter, do I? You won't regret it. You'll be out of here inside of an hour. Oh. Uh, incidentally, it was Sapelli who went bond for your release. He uh, wants you to have dinner with him at his club tonight. He left this with me. Thought you might need a little money. So we're off to a good start, Gloria. I'll talk to you in my office before you leave. Did she turn you down? No. She agreed. Well, what's the trouble? Me? I feel like a heel. Yes, I'm getting sentimental. Jim, do I have to read you a lecture about public officials putting sentiment ahead of duty? Do I have to sell you on your own idea? Oh, I'll go through with it. 
Does that mean I have to like it? Honey, if you're still worrying about that winter's thing, skip it. Roddy Jerome on your team, you're a cinch. Bring another bottle, will you, Sam? Another of the same for the boss. Leave it to Artie. He'll stall the thing until either the cops or my boys get definite evidence that Winters robbed his own store. You see, he's going to have to unload that jewelry and try to peddle it off through the fences. My boys watch the fences. It's as easy as that. Mr. Sapelli, you've done so much already. How can I ever thank you? Doing nothing but thanking me all evening. You missed your dinner. You're going on the dessert. And, uh, call me Joe, huh? All right, Joe. That's better. You're really going to work on this one, huh? From what he said, this one's no Maribel. I wouldn't make any cracks about it if I was you. Thanks for the tip. About this. Oh, do we have to go through that again? I, I can't accept it. But I, I could accept some kind of a job, if you could arrange it. I don't see why not. What kind of a job? I worked as a secretary back in Claremore. General office work, um, dictation, answering phones. Oh, that's odd. I always answer my own phones, and I never put anything in writing. What else? Well, once I worked with a bookkeeping firm, I was a pretty good bookkeeper. Yeah, that's odd, too. I never keep, uh, books. <laughs> Say, that might not be a bad idea. I make them, you keep them. <laughs> I don't understand. Ever play the horses? Mm-hmm. Well, not at the tracks. There was a little place back in Claremore where you could place a little bet now and then. Did you ever bet? Oh, sure, sure. Not the way you do, honey. You see, you bet the horses from the sucker side. Starting tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, I'll show you the right side to bet the horses from. And maybe I've got a job for you, too. Is it a deal? <gasps> it's a deal. How do you like that? I spend all day in the beauty parlor getting glamour for the guy, and the minute my back's turned, he's in a huddle with another dame. Mr. Sapelli says maybe you want to take a trip somewhere, Maribel. Get some dough to travel on. You can't kiss me off like that. Mr. Sapelli says for me to say goodbye for him. Don't forget to write. friend of yours? Oh, somebody I used to know. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sapelli. Hi. Yeah, I just got these in. Nice and oh. fresh. Oh. Not so good yesterday, huh, Gus? Like I told you, I got stuck on seven payoffs on Nellie's pride. Two guys had him to win, yeah, three I know, guys had him to... Yeah, I know, I know. It's too bad. Have you got it, Gus? 385 bucks. Now, that's not good. But when you figure Nellie's... Never try pride. to figure the horse races, Gus. Run up your blood pressure. Gus speaking. Huh? So long, kid. But see you tomorrow. What's the initial? Count it, baby. What's the matter? What if you're held up? Oh, 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 look behind you. I told you, I've got friends. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, thirty-six, one, thirty-seven. That's it, Joe. You took a loss on that parlay, but that's what makes horse races. Sometimes you gotta take a beating. I know. I took a beating once on a fixed race. I didn't like it. Wait outside for me, will you, honey? I'll be in the car. Tell me about that parlay, Bertha. I told you last night. Jed Fuller, five and five. Sloppy Joe to Luigi. We're out 303 bucks. Fuller went to Vegas to try his luck on the wheels. Funny thing about that. I saw Fuller just before he left town. He told me he didn't win on that race. He lost. He... Well, Joe, there must be some mistake. There is. You made it. Now fix it.
I'm sorry, Joe. I, I had very heavy expenses. I was going to make it good next week. It wasn't a holdout. It was a loan. You want a loan, Bertha? Ask me for it first. Remember, nobody double-crosses me. Nobody. Count it, baby. Should be 440 on the nose. That's a new use for a beauty parlor. Why not? Women can vote in this country. Why can't they play the horses? That's correct. Hey, what are you doing with those? Well, if you want me to keep your records. Not on paper, I don't. Look, honey, sometimes the cops stop me just for a routine shakedown. What would they think if they found me with a lot of records? What would they think if they found you with all this money? No law against carrying a lot of money, is there? You mean I have to keep these figures all in my head? That's where I keep them. I figure with two of us, it ought to be easier. And they have to be carried separately, day to day, week to week? Oh, no, I'm not that good. At the end of each day's collections, I enter them in a book. Well, then you do have a book. When do I make the entries? You don't. I do. Of course, I... A lot of people in this town would give their right arms to find that book. I hope you don't think You know, that... baby, you're probably the one dame in the world who can make a sucker out of me. But I don't think you will. Another place here? Yeah, that barber shop across the street. A fellow named Tony Dusick runs it. He does a pretty good business. For me, I mean. He's going to be raided in about 20 minutes. Raided? Yeah, he knows about it. I phoned him last night. Hey, police in this town are getting too efficient. That big fella driving the car, that's Lieutenant Metzger. The other chap with him is Captain Roberts, vice squad. What? own bookies. You don't care if they're arrested? Not if it happens only once in a while. In this business, you've got to expect a raid every now and then. It keeps the police busy, that makes the taxpayers happy, and everybody's happy, including me. Not including that barber. Don't worry about Tony. All my bookies get a bonus for every day they have to spend in jail. Put the stuff in the safe, then we'll start collections on the east side. Shall I wait here? Might as well. It'll only take me a couple of minutes. important. Those two men from the vice squad, they're here. At all? Well, don't you understand? I mean in the club. Well, they had no beef with me, baby. Well, that money, they'll know it can't be income from your club, not that much. Why, honey, you're worrying about me. That's Gloria Dell, my new secretary. Gloria, this is Captain Roberts, Lieutenant Metzger. Hello. Uh, how long have you known her? Are you boys here on police business that are trying to tell me how to run my business? You know what we're here for. Yeah, I know what you're here for. You didn't waste any time, did you? And speaking of time, try to time your raids better. 20 minutes ahead of schedule is drawing it too close. What do you want to do, catch me in one of them? Let's talk, Joe, alone. That won't be a minute, honey. Certainly. I don't like that, Joe. 
I do. And I pick my own women. Sure. You'll pick all you want. But when it comes to picking secretaries, that's something else. You mean that's your department? I just want to make sure that you know what you pick. Joe, say the word and we'll put her under surveillance. Check her background, watch her mail, tap the telephone. The works. You're good at that, aren't you? We got a lot at stake, too, you know. Ed, let's get one thing straight. Your job is to police the city, not my syndicate. you've done fine. In three weeks, you've accomplished more than my investigators have dug up in a year. I'm proud of you. Thanks. I'm not very proud of myself. We've suspected Captain Roberts for several months. The time's not ripe to crack down on him yet. But the time is ripe for you to take the next step. Well, haven't I done enough already? How long do I have to go on like this? Till we get Sapelli's records. I told you he keeps them in his head. You also told me he enters the records in a master book, once a day, sometimes twice. Well, I don't know where he keeps it. Gloria, that book is just as important to you as it is to me. You say yourself that Charles Winters makes weekly payments to Sapelli on a gambling debt. If you can find that book, it'll show the entries of Winters' payments to Sapelli. Do I need to tell you how much that'll help your case? Is there anything else, Mr. Devon? That's all. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. They serve dinners here? Special ones. Home cooked. Nice girl, nice dinner. Fai presto, mamma. Io fame. Oh, if you eat home more often, you no be so hungry all mama, the time. Fai presto, fa presto. Io sì, fame, mamma, fame. Presto, presto. Tu mangiassi a casa più spesso, non avresti così tanta fame. Vado, vado. Vicino, well, that besides that, she thinks you're nice. She doesn't know I'm wanted for robbery. She doesn't know a lot of things about me, either. Tonight, I got news for you, baby. This is the only place mama won't dust. I'm afraid of artillery. Know what this is? Not your record book. Mm -hmm. But the desk, it, it isn't even locked. Nobody knows about it. Besides, I trust Mama. Take a good look at this. Tell me what it means. It simply means that Mr. Winters doesn't owe you any more money. 
Oh, it means a lot more than that to you, baby. Two weeks ago, my boys picked up positive proof that Winters robbed his own store. He used you for a patsy. We tagged it through a fence. I've just been waiting for him to pay off. Now all we have to do is notify the insurance dicks. Mr. Winters goes away for a long time. You're in the clear. Now will you stop worrying about this? Thanks, Joe. You are so hungry, so come eat yourself. How are you talking, Mama? <laughs> Mama, is that car coming here? Oh, it's only the driveway next door. Some people, they move into the house next door. Yeah? What kind of people? Oh, just the people. I mind the, my business, uh, they mind their business. And a girl, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, brought the blonde with him. Anybody else? There's never anybody else. That girl's beginning to get pretty warm. You still think she might be working with the DA? What difference? If it's not her, it'll be somebody else. Supposing too careless. It's only a question of time till a lid blows off. Where do you want to be when it does blow? Anywhere's the boots to Pelly. Well, that's what I mean. Oh, that was the best meal I ever had. <laughs> Must have gained five pounds. Oh, on such a full stomach, you not take her on the plane, Joe. The poor girl, she might get sick, maybe. <laughs> What's this about a plane? Well, I have a little four-passenger job, and I thought you might like a night view of the city. Do you fly a plane? Yeah, I'm quite a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Adio, Mama. Adio. You take good care of yourself, eh? Oh, sure, Bye. sure. Bye. <laughs> this old lady of his, does she ever go out? Not much, just to the store. We'll get a duplicate key made, one that fits the rear door. Key me. Where? The city pays you to be a detective. Do I even have to figure to key me? Oh. Scared? A little. Needn't be. Automatic pilot. Those lights, the sky. Yeah. Quite a night. So far up, it makes you feel sort of free. Or maybe it's because of the news you gave me about Mr. Winters. Think you can stand some more news? Mm -hmm, it's good. It's up to you. Open it. Diamond you can start wearing any time. The other one, I guess you have to wait until we appear before a judge. It's one way to get Joseph Pelley in front of a judge. Joe, I, I can't accept it. Oh? You got competition? Oh, no, it, it's just... I... No, you don't feel the same way about me. It's just one of those things. It's nobody's fault. Yes, but I do, really. I Get it. What's the trouble? It's... Well, I, I don't know how to say it. Want me to say it for you? I like this business I'm in. Maybe I don't like it anymore, either. I've been thinking a long time about getting out. I'm tired of dodging the law. I want a business that's on the up and up. I thought we'd go someplace where nobody knows me. I've thought about it a lot up here. I figured I'd open a little restaurant. Italian food. A little place like my father had in San Francisco. What do you say? You can be Mrs. Joseph Pelli. Fine Italian food, light wines and beer. Joe, would you mind if I took a few days to think it over? Sure. Think it over. Take as much time as you want. But while you're thinking it over, did you wear that time? Might help you think my way. Will you?
Young lady, let me give you some advice. Sapelli's a criminal. He's also a very smooth operator in more ways than one. Just because he gave you a ring and fed you a line, that doesn't mean he's on the level. Oh, but he is on the level. I'm the one who's not on the level. You're working for the law. That's level enough. Where does he keep the records? I... How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know. Would you swear to that? Gloria, I expect your cooperation. After all, I have been helping you on that Winters case. Oh, that's all over now. By this afternoon, you're going to have to drop all charges against me and arrest Mr. Winters for robbing his own store. If you don't believe me, call Mr. Jerome, my attorney. I believe you. He called me this morning. Then you better get yourself another spy, Mr. Devon. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Suppose Sapelli finds out the truth. How you've been working for me. He will find out. I intend to tell him myself. Okay, Gloria. I appreciate what you've done for me. But understand this. I will get Sapelli's records. I will send him to prison. Not through me, Mr. Devon. Joe, can I speak to you for a minute alone? Hi, baby. Mom outside? No, I didn't get her yet. Joe, I've got to talk to you. Well, 30. Mama's waiting. It's important, Joe. Not now. You said you wanted a week to think it over. I don't want to hear a peep out of you, not for a week. What I've got to say won't keep for a week. Will you listen? Tonight, maybe, but not now. What do you want to do, make me late for the races? You don't realize how important this is. Here I make a million bucks a year off the races, and I haven't seen a horse race in years. Hurry up, honey. Get Mama. be sitting outside, Mama. Sure you won't need a coat? Uh, maybe you are right. I, I go in and get one. You stay here. I'll get it for you. Just tell me where it is. Uh, it's on the sofa. It's nice. You go to all that trouble. Oh, nonsense. Be right back. Thank you. Strictly police. We have them right from the start. The only reason we tied up with Sapelli was to get evidence on him. Got it straight? The only thing wrong is you nail Sapelli, he'll sing. He'll bust us wide open. You ever hear of a guy getting shot or resisting arrest? Yeah. It's a race. Now, you keep your eye on those men out there, on the horses. They're called jockeys. Jockeys, huh? Now, they all start together. And they run around that dirt road out there between the fences. And the first horse back wins the race. That's all? Well, there's uh, something more. Sometimes people bet money on the races. And if their horse wins, they win. Like, for example, these tickets. This means that I bet on a horse called Hank's Pet. Slow start. And today, he carried too much weight. Glad the girl, number four, was bending up. But after the horse, I got him three dollars across the board with Mr. Martinelli, the grocer. Come on, the glad girl! Come on! Come on, the glad girl! You get up on that race! How'd you find this place? Well, it's a good thing for you. I found it. Let's go inside. We're in trouble up to our necks. Start talking. The syndicate is busted wide open. Now, why? The DA's knocking over your bookies at the rate of a dozen an hour. The last counter was 38, and they're still going strong. Where you been? Hello? Yeah, put them on. Joe, this is it. I've been trying to get in touch with you all afternoon. I know, I know. Cut the corners. How'd it happen? What do I do? Now, listen to me, Joe, and don't interrupt. The DA's got your book. He's got your records. 
Hold on. Somebody's been in here. The DA's got my records all of men writing. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Artie, shall I bail out? Right now, as fast as you can. And don't get in touch with me for a week. And listen, Joe, keep off the streets. They've got every cop in town looking for you. Artie, phone Benny at the Fairfield number. Tell him to meet me at the airport in 20 minutes. Mama, take the bus, you and Gloria. Go to San Francisco, go to Rose. I'll get in touch with you through Tony. Joe, can't I go with you? Don't talk. Do as I say. Don't even take time to pack. Go with Mama. Roberts, I'm stealing your squad car. It's the only way I can get through the streets. Mine's tag. Where are the keys? Well, they're in the switch. Oh, well, here's your last payoff. I... Wait a minute. Who else knows this address? You haven't even told me how you got here. Well, it was turned in a department at noon with an order to stake out here and wait for you. Lucky for you, it was me that took the order. Who turned in the address? Yes, sir. What's she got to do with this? Well, she swiped the records. Why shouldn't she turn in the address? Joe, You're that... crazy. She was with me all afternoon. And she was with the DA all morning. Joe, I can explain that. She's been working undercover for the DA right from the start. Ask her why she went to see him this morning. Ask her. Joe, I only went there to tell him I was through. And you were working for him. Oh, Joe, I couldn't help it. That's what I wanted to tell well, you. Listen, only... see, that proves it. She swiped the records. Oh, I didn't. Joe, you've got to believe me. I only came here to pick up Mama. Shut How up. I... Mama, you've got to tell me the truth. Did she come in this house alone this afternoon? Did she go near that desk? Oh, of course I didn't. When was... You heard me. Shut up. Mama, you've got to tell me. How long was she alone in this room? Answer me, Mama. Tell me. Yes, sir, Joe. Just the one minute I gave her the key. I forgot my... <laughs> Oh, I only came back for a coat. That's all I gave me. No, Joe! Please, Joe! Mama, I'm gonna go to San Francisco, go to Rosa and Tony. Oh, Joe, you've got to believe me. What you do? What you do to my boy? Nothing, Mama. You believe me, please. Operator, police emergency. Put me through to City Hall. City Hall, vice squad. Lieutenant Metzger, yeah, hurry. Hello, Metzger, get this. He's trying to blow town on his plane. Get over to that airport. He'll have Benny with him and he'll resist arrest. Now, don't muff it, shoot. Yeah, make that clear to the boys. Don't talk, listen. On the way to the airport, don't use your siren. Some cop might think you'll need help, and that's the one thing we don't need. Yeah, now get going. Get away from that phone. Now I want to use it. Well, just look at that now. What do you want to do, baby? Call the airport? You heard what I said. Get away from that phone. Sure, sure. Use the phone. Use it. Gloria! Listen carefully, Mama. This man just gave orders to shoot your son. Not orders to arrest him, Mama. Orders to kill him. Mrs. Sapella, she's... It's the truth, Mama. Look at that phone. He broke the wire so I couldn't call Joe. They want to kill Joe at the airport, Mama, so he can't talk to save their own necks. Hold it like this, Mama. Press the trigger if he moves. I'll get to Joe as fast as I can. Now, Mrs. Sapelli, you don't think for one minute I'd do anything to hurt Joe. You heard what he said about that girl. She double crossed. <laughs> Operator, this is official police. Give me the police radio tower. City Hall, 500. Repeat. Order from Captain E.B. Roberts to Lieutenant Ralph Metzger. The Pelly's girl is on way to your same destination. She will try to warn him. Proceed with caution, but follow instructions. That is all. How do you like that? If she tips the Pelly, he really will resist arrest. To the airport, fast. We'll follow you. at the club. I almost got picked up. Let me have your gun. What for? Come on, give. The cops do tag us. I don't want to fight it out. In prison, I've got a chance. Can we get on the field from here? Sure. 
Ours to back away. You'd be surprised that Blonde hasn't already tipped him off. Call the tower and have him ground all planes. Now play this safe. We don't want any slips. Mr. Savelli, just a minute. Your plane hasn't been checked. Did you want to take her up? No. Well, Jimmy will be back any minute. You better let him check it for you. All right, find it, find it. That's fine, that's all we need. exactly where he keeps his plane. I was only here once at night. Mm -hmm. Look, it's your blonde. She brought the cops. Get in the plane. We're taking off. Oh, there he is. And there's Metzger. I thought you said we had a chance. Stick with it, Benny. Pull it, Metzger. So, Pelly, I got a warrant for his arrest. I got a warrant for your arrest. Any chance to ground that plane from the tower? Well, he'll be grounded all right. His tank's empty. Why, he's hardly got enough gas to clear the field. We're out of gas, kid. Dang luck. your line. You fell for it, that's all. But you gave me a ring. So did your guy, Larry Goodrich. The only difference between me and your bigamist is when he gives a woman a ring, he wants her money. Me, I just want the dame. Joe, you can't I give those things away by the dozen. Ask Maribel, ask Lottie Parker. Oh, look, kid, don't take it so big. You can keep the ring and the fat salary I paid you. Look, Artie Jerome is out getting you a ticket on tonight's train to Kansas. What else do you want? You're just saying all this just to keep me from waiting for you. Don't kid yourself. I won't serve a day. I've already talked to Artie and the DA. I'll be out in time for dinner. If I... Save it. Maybe I'll come down to the station and see you off. They'd throw the book at me, huh? Well, here I am, free as a bird. Why don't you hurry up? You'll miss your train. I only waited to give you this. Oh, I'll save it. You can trade it for a mink coat. That's what Lottie did. 
I'm not Lottie, and I'm not Maribel. Okay, Joe. You kept your promise to her, you saw her off. Now you can keep your promise to me. I'm counting on a full statement. Swell girl. Only girl I ever wanted to marry. Well, you're going, Joe. You won't be getting married for a long time. Yeah. Sure. Let's get started. Oh, <laughs> 